Welcome back to this review of Sex and Culture, Unwin's 1934 masterwork that predicts cultural collapse for the West by 2060. In the last video, we looked at how Unwin showed human energy comes from restricting sexual opportunity. But he noted that in the past, no human society has displayed great energy for an extended period. Why is this? Unwin concludes that it was the unequal fate of the women, not the compulsory continence, that caused the downfall of absolute monogamy making women mere appendages of the male estate, if not legal non-entities or chattel, meant they longed to be freed from their disadvantages. But relaxing the regulations meant sexual opportunity was increased. Sexual desires could then be satisfied in a direct or perverted manner. No dissatisfaction demanded an outlet. No emotional stress arose. So the energy of the society decreased and then disappeared. Thus, if any society should desire to control its cultural destiny, it may do so by decreasing or increasing the amount of its energy. Such decrease or increase will appear in the third generation after the sexual opportunity has been extended or reduced. Only legal equality between the sexes and minimum sexual opportunity will make possible the achievement of higher culture. Such a society's inherited tradition would be continually enriched, Unwin says. But we must remember that rationalistic civilizations are rare. As Unwin showed, there have only been three. By contrast, a lesser energy is easily secured. But the force of life seems to flow backwards and the members of the society will not be slow to take advantage of any relaxation in the regulations. Accordingly, Unwin warns of the amazing alacrity with which, after a period of intense compulsory continence, the human organism seizes the earliest opportunity to satisfy its innate desires in a direct or perverted manner. Unwin, a secular liberal, falls short of a full analysis here. But according to the Catholic tradition, by the sin of Adam, human nature was deprived of both its preternatural and supernatural gifts and graces. The lower appetite began to lust against the spirit, and evil habits contracted by personal sins wrought disorder in the body, obscured the mind, and weakened the power of the will, without, however, destroying its freedom. In other words, sin crouches at the door. Unwin reminds us that no society has ever aimed at displaying energy for its own sake, and no man has yet proved that human energy is a desirable thing. Although chastity produces energy, it can't direct this energy without the other virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude and temperance. Unwin warns that the notion of an ever-increasing cultural process has been encouraged by our own attitude to our own peculiar culture. We are convinced that the cultural process is a progressive development. We assume that our own culture is the most developed of all cultures and that every change in our cultural condition is evidence of higher cultural development. This, he says, is a quaint and comfortable doctrine and until it is dispelled, we shall understand neither our own culture nor that of any other society.